this October is always a good time to focus on pumpkins. Notice first my paper is vertical. We're an all pumpkin. We're not going to start at the very top. We are going to start about here on the page. And Kasama really enjoys having pumpkins that are not of a perfect shape. So let's embrace not making a perfect circle or a perfect oval. I think the imperfect adds a lot to the nature of something. And then let's add the stem. See, that's why we weren't close to the top. So we could add the stem at this point. It starts as kind of an arc. And I'm going to bring another arc up so it's wider at the base. And then we're going to do a little curve at the top. If you've ever seen a real pumpkin in the grocery store or in your garden, you'll know that it has a lot of texture to it. So these lines are helping produce the texture. Now, the pumpkin part, you know how it's got the bumpies that come out? That's what we're going to draw but we're not going to draw too many, okay? Now, if you paid any attention to the information about Miss Kusama, you'll know that she really likes, what's that? Polka dots. So we are going to be making some polka dots on this. That's why we don't want too many lines too close together because, in fact, we want to have room for our polka dots. You know, I think I might add one more here just for variety so we have a couple that are more narrow. Now let's take a look and see. I'm going to do polka dots coming down in these different stripey areas. My polka dots are going to start out as circles. But see here, it's a narrow space. It's going to be a small dot. And then I'm going to do a little bit bigger one. My dots are going to reflect how large the area is. So they do not have to stay the same size at all. See how they're kind of varying in size? And that's kind of the fun part about when you are drawing your very own drawing is you can decide how you want to do it, okay? So mine came down around like that. I'm gonna start again here. And I'm gonna draw a little bit faster because you do not have to see me just drawing all these circles. My circles don't have to line up, but I am paying attention to can I oh I can do a bigger one there see and this one will be a little bit smaller so here I go along and along and along and I think that really helps give it some movement you know when you have movement in art it helps guide your eye along and almost flows like a river look at how teeny weeny these are here wow they're small, but that gives it variety. It's always interesting to have variety in your artwork as well. And that's when you change things up. Notice how they're all circles, but there is a variety in shape and size. Some of them are more perfect. Some of them are less perfect. Some of them are little. Some of them are medium. Some of them are big. So that gives you a variety of circle. Wouldn't quite be the same if they were all exactly like little templates of each other, would it? It wouldn't be as fun. All right. That was my pumpkin drawing. And here I am, I'm coloring. I am speeding this up 20 times the speed. What you might want to notice is that I am trying to create a pattern here with the pink-orange, pink-orange stripes. I like to have things repeating as patterns as well. This did take quite a while. 
I was trying to use two different blues, but it does not show up as well in the video. But I thought it would be fun to have the blue and the orange working together because they are complementary colors. They are crossing each other on the color wheel. All right, and here we go with our final part to the drawing section of the pumpkin. I'm going in and I'm doing what's called changing the measure of the line. I'm thickening it in some areas. It helps create a little bit of movement and dimension. 